Ezekiel chapter number 8. Then he brought me, verse number 7, to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. This is that old hole in the wall game. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. I want you to notice this. The wicked abominations. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, the elders, the ancients, the old men. And in the midst of them stood Jehazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he to me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers, chambers of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. You may think you're doing all that in the dark. But the Lord does see. Amen. Now chapter number 10. Verse number 1. Then, now this is a different scenery here. Entirely different situation. Then I looked and behold in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne and he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said go in between the wheels even under the cherub and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims and scatter them over the city, and he went in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Oh, did you notice that both of these courts or temples were filled with clouds, weren't they? Both of them were filled with clouds. And I tell you, it's good to shout, it's good to praise God. It's good for God's glory to enter, but I want to make sure that it's not your cloud that's uh, darkening up the place. I want to make sure it's not man's doctrine that's causing all this shouting and all this praising. I want to make sure that we're not praising God just because man wants us to do it. Okay? The cloud here... It was God's glory and His brightness. Nothing hides from God's presence. Bless. This temple, there was no sin in it. The other temple, uh, the cloud, a thick cloud of incense went, went up. But it was old men that had backslid on God. And the only thing that filled the house was man's desires and man's thoughts, man's opinions, man's doctrines. But the other one was from God. Bless. Amen. Thank God for the times he comes by without us having to do anything. He just comes by and we're humbled by the fact that, Lord, we hadn't even done a thing tonight and you blessed us. Bless. Amen. Now keep that in mind. 
this cloud or this cloud? The first cloud we saw or the second cloud? Bible said he's coming back in the clouds, don't it? Coming back in the clouds. Amen? All right, now let's go somewhere else here. Let's turn in Deuteronomy chapter number 32. Verse number 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked, rebelled. The word kick means he rebelled. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick. This is not talking about me and thee. Thou art covered with fatness. That makes you want to go on a diet, don't it? Then he puts fatness in the word of God represents prosperity, by the way. It represents blessings and prosperity. We'll eat the fat of the land and all that stuff. It represents pro prosperity. But here, they wax fat and prospered in the wrong way. Watch this. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. It's all just a smoke. It's all just a smoke. There's nothing to it. He, we may own a house, may be filled with smoke, but it's all just a smoke if God is not in the center of all of it. He forsook God after God had blessed him and lifted him up and prospered him. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. And, and my thought here, God said in one place, I will hide my face from thee. Let's drop down verse number 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. In other words, God said, I'm going to draw my presence away from them and see what they're going to do. God said, I'll take my presence away from them for a while and see how they get along then. See what they're going to do. Oh Lord, help me. I don't want you to draw your presence away from me to see what I'm going to do because I can't make it. I can't make it without his help. Can you? I can't make it without God's divine intervention and presence and help. But he said, I will hide my face from them and I will see what the, their end, I will see then what their end shall be. If they think they can make it without me, if they think they can go on and forsake me, and think the blessings are still going to come and everything's going to be lovely. They got another thing coming. Yes. Now let's go up. Verse number 16. They provoked him to jealousy. God is a jealous God. He will not share you with the devil and the world. He don't want you partaking of the things of the world or the sins of this world and try to come back and be with God and be with the devil. He, he's a jealous God. Amen. He does not want us picking up strange gods here and there. Things that draw our mind away. That draw our hearts and minds away. A lot of times I think computers can draw your mind away. So much is at your disposal, at your fingertips. Many people have lost their salvation. You remember a young man, a man that came here, uh, goes to another church now. He came here, and uh, years ago he came here, and then he went back to his home church. But his wife started looking on the internet and started texting uh, other men, and it led from that to that, and got worse and worse. She started pulling up uh, pornography, and their home split up. She left him and told him she didn't want him no more. She, you know, that's what happens. Put another God before you 
and see if that God don't destroy your soul. Put something else before God and see if God won't withdraw from you and see what you'll do then. They Listen, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Strange gods. And I have to say our God, the things that people uh, worship now or love today are strange also, don't you? Not just back then when they worshiped Asherah and, and Baal and, and, and Dagon and all those strange gods. I mean, I can't see myself bowing down to an idol that looks like part man and part fish. If I had an old something like that, I'd probably take my rod and reel and be trying to throw it in his mouth. Because it, meant, it would mean nothing to me. Because I know there's nothing in a stone. There's nothing in a tree. It don't matter how pretty you carve it out to be some kind of statue. It's still just dead. That's right. That's right. We have knowledge enough to know that in America, don't we? You don't see idol worship hardly much in America as far as the way they, they did in the Old Testament when they raised up the big old idols and they all fell prostrate on the ground. And, and they worship idol gods. They worship statues, stone images. And there was no lot. They knew they cut them out themselves. They knew they took the gold and the silver and formed it themselves. And then they set it up on a rock and said, Oh, we worship you, Almighty. You know, back then, I guess it was different than it is now. Overseas, they still do that. In China, they worship the little fat man. They worship an idol. In India, they worship all kinds of idols. They bow down to them. In America, we've been taught and we know better because of being a Christian nation. Amen. Based on being a Christian nation, we've been taught that a statue is just a piece of wood or a piece of art. You know, just a piece of art is all it is, okay? But they fell prostrate to the ground and they worship <laughs> idol gods. Well, listen. The strange gods with abominations provoke they him to anger. With abominations. Let's classify abominations. Amen. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are abomination unto him. A proud look. Is that abomination? Yes, it is. Stand before the mirror and think that you're something else and you're handsome and good looking. And, oh, and you're, oh, look at me. That's abomination in God's eyes. A proud look. A lying tongue. Somebody that lies. Uh, he that speaketh uh, so a discord among the brethren. Okay? Uh, hands that shed innocent blood. Feet that be swift and running to mischief. All these things are abomination. Not only that, look in the book. Find your abomination where it says an abomination. Amen. It's abomination for a man to lie with a man and a woman to lie with a woman. It's abomination for the, all these things. Amen. So is it still abomination today? I think so. If it was an abomination, exceeding wicked sin is what that means. Okay, back then, uh, he provoked them to jealousy with their abomination. And God is the same. If we have the abominations in our lives, we're provoking him to anger. Amen. And one of these days, he's going to withdraw himself and hide his face from them. And then he says, I'll see what they'll do without me. Our nation cannot do without God. And I'm afraid this president is causing God to say this. I will hide my face from them and I will see what therein shall be then. I'm afraid he's just ruining as a, as a whole the government situation. Amen. Now you can go in the military and say you're gay. And I'm going to tell you, it doesn't work in the military. You don't have your own private bath showers. You don't have your own private uh, uh, toiletry thing. It's all wide open. And I certainly would not have anybody in there looking at me 
uh, when I, you know, I'm in there washing or whatever, you know, I don't want no uh, queer looking at me funny and say, you ready to go fight? Can I hold your weapon for you? I'll hold your weapon while you go shower. Here, let me get the soap for you. It might be funny, but that's what it is. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I don't claim to be a prophet, but I will prophesy to you that because of what he has done, he has endangered our young men and women in the military uh, more than ever before. You watch what I tell you. I believe there will be more casualties than there ever was because of what he's done. And I don't believe a, bit, a lot of these big old bad Marines are going to like it. Do you? I can see this Marine slap the other one down in the box on the, and then this other one. Can I get in there with y'all boys? You think that he's going to let him in his foxhole? No, you stand up there. And you tell us if you see anything coming. Huh? It's true. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We're in trouble. Because of the abominations that's provoking God to anger. And that's what's happening in our government, in our military, you know what happened the day he signed the bill? I seen it on uh, the computer. He stood up and said, Here, here's what this is. I still see it in my mind. When they passed the bill to let gays openly in the military, he stood up there and says, This is a good day. This is a very good day. What is up? What's wrong with these people? What is wrong with with these people that condone and listen. I do believe that America is no longer have the cloud of God. They have a big old cloud of incense over them with a false sense of security that we're going to be protected with our might. And we cannot be protected with our weaponry. The only one that's protected us thus far is God because we respected Christianity. And even though as a whole they weren't Christian, we respected Christianity and we helped those nations that were oppressed by the devil and all those false religions, we helped them. But now, amen, we don't respect as a nation, we don't respect God or anything about God. So God says this right here, I will hide my face from them. Verse 17, they sacrificed unto devils. They sacrificed unto devils. In the Old Testament, they sacrificed their children unto devils. And now people are sacrificing their children to devils. You hear what I'm saying? They're sacrificing their children uh, to the computers, to the game boys, to the uh, to the that stealing car thing. What is it called? Huh? Grand Theft Auto. Those games where, you know, any, any kind of talk can come over it and, and you're fighting and killing ruthlessly. And, and the, these zombie games that Pete, them young people play and they shoot their brains out and you see it all. Uh, they're sacrificing their children to devils. They sacrificed unto devils. Listen to this. And not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up. Whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat them. They are unmindful. And has forgotten God that formed thee. They're trying to get forget God that formed us. Don't you know in America they're trying their best to eliminate creation theory? It ain't a theory. The creationism. They're trying their best to eliminate it and say we come from monkeys or we come from the Big Bang Theory and they're trying their best to say that we didn't come from God. We came from a little organism. 
or a big organism, whatever. And when the Lord saw it, listen to this. It says, and has forgotten the God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. Because of provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Now our text. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. In the New Testament it tells that in the last days. Jesus said when I come will I find faith on the earth. And in another place it said this is a faithless and a perverse generation. Children that will not hear. Children that will not listen. People uh, that will not listen. Church people that will not listen. Amen. Church people that will not do what the word of God said. Church people that are disobedient to the word of God. Amen. I want you to know something today. I want to listen. I want to hear what the Lord does say. I don't want him to hide his face from me and punish me and say, now see what you can do without me. Have you ever uh, tried to help somebody and they didn't want your help? And he's okay, go ahead and see what you do. Huh? I've done it before. Okay, do it yourself and see how. And after a while they come back, I couldn't do it myself. I need your help. What did I tell you? That's what God said. Now you try it yourself. Do it on your own and see how far you get without God. Amen. We cannot make it without the Lord. We cannot make it without coming to the house of God and letting His glory fill the temple. Amen. I don't want just a, a, a cloud of incense. I want a cloud of glory. Them old men, 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel and Jehaz and I, they all gathered together in the temple, but it was not to worship God. It was to turn their back upon God and turn their face away from the altar and turn it toward the sun. Amen. I don't want that. I don't want an incense full in the church. Incense means praising. Our praises are a sweet smell to God. And if we all we have is just the praise, amen, I don't, it, it will not work. We need God's glory to come down. Our praises go up. Amen. But I want the smoke of God's glory to come down in the temple, don't you? I want Him to come and hover over us. And I want to live in that glory of God that He's got prepared for us. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. This is what's happening now. We're being provoked to anger with foolish nations, aren't we? Huh? Don't tell me that Iraq was not a foolish nation. They were. Don't tell me Afghanistan with those terrorists are not foolish people believing what they believe. All right, we're being provoked to anger with those foolish nations, and we think we can do it now. Years ago, they would pray before the battles. Hey Amen. It don't matter if the general was not saved or not, he would, they would bow their head and at least say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. They would at least do that. When we played football, Tony, didn't we do that? We would bow and they would say the Lord's Prayer and, we'd, and, and I was serious about that. We'd we fixing to go and we might get our neck broke. We don't know. We prayed, amen, and done that. But now they want to do it themselves. They want to think that all their smoke and mirrors and all uh, that they can do is going to benefit them. But I want you to notice the blessings need to come from up there down. Amen. The blessings don't come from here and up. The blessings fall down. The blessings come down from God. Every good and perfect gift coming down from the Father of lights, in whom is no variables, neither shadow of turning. Amen. The blessings.
blessings come down from God. For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell. You hear what he's saying? Let's see what we'll do when the fire is kindled in our nation. You watch what I'm telling you. When the fire is kindled in our nation, amen, because of our wickedness and our sinfulness, I have to include myself because this is my country. When I pray, oh Lord, forgive us of our iniquities. Help our country. We've fallen, Lord. We've come short. We've fallen down from what we once believed. Help us, Lord. I don't know if you how y'all pray, but that's what I pray about this nation. Yes. Help us. And shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischief upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without, the terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin the suckling also with the man of gray hair. The sword without. The sword without. Those things out there that are killing. And the terror within. Did, G did Jesus say this verse? In the last days men's hearts will be failing them for fear. Men's hearts will be failing them for fear. And look for looking after those things that shall come upon this earth. The terror within, that's what's happening to people now. The terror within is killing them. Heart attacks everywhere. People dying of all kinds of diseases. The terror within. I'm so glad tonight my name is in the book of life. Amen. So glad I don't have any terror within tonight. How about you? So glad I love Jesus and I'm looking for that cloud to fall down. Amen. I'm not worried about the incense that's going up. I'm looking for the cloud that's coming down. Amen. I want you to know tonight I'm so glad, amen, that I'm on the winning side. Amen. Jesus tells me if he takes his presence away from them, he's going to stand back and say, I'll see what they can do now. I'm glad he told me I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll go with you all the way even to the end of the world. But his presence will always be with me. Why? Because I hate the idols. I hate the wickedness. I hate the sins of this world. Our nation has dropped down low. And I hate the filth and the ungodliness in it. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. Was it not Belshazzar that said, Was it not I that made Babylon with our own hands? Well, our nation is to the point now they're no longer in God we trust. They want it off. They want it off. They want in God we trust off. And every now and then somebody come up with a dollar bill from the 30s and didn't, it didn't have in God we trust on it. They want to buy it. Hey Amen. I don't want a dollar bill that don't say in God we trust. Do you? I don't think that's the collector's item to me. I think as long as we trust in God, we'll be all right. Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise. That they understood that, that, that they would consider their latter end. I don't believe that as a whole, my family, my brother, my sister, has considered their latter end. I don't believe they've considered that yet. I believe when somebody considers their, the end of their life, they begin to worry a little bit. 
When somebody considers that they're leaving here, they begin to inquire what to do. Don't you know that people get sick? They go to doctors to try their very best to find something to keep them here a little longer, don't they? They spend everything they got to stay here as long as they can. And I think it was Charles Leggett spoke to somebody years ago and said he'd give every, every penny he had to be young again. Y'all must have remember him. He'd give all the money he had, everything he had, all that he owned to, to be young again. Can't do it. Amen. We're on a journey, Christian. We're on a journey. And we have a God that loves us and we love Him. And He will never back up and say, I'm going to see what they're going to do now without me around. He's going to always be there. He'll always be by your side. He'll always be in your heart. He'll always watch before you and He's watching your back. Amen. Nothing's going to sneak up on us because God sees it all. Amen. Nothing's going to hit buffet us on either side because God sees it all. And we're not going to run into anything that we can't handle because God already knows everything before us and He's going to watch out for it. I'm so glad that I serve the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I'm so glad that I serve Yahweh and His Son, Yahshua, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So glad I met Him and He met me. So glad He saved me and lifted me up. So glad my name is in the book right now. Amen. And He will never leave me. But He'll be there with me. Praise God. Now listen. Let's finish this. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this. That they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to fly? Except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter, their wine. Is the poison of dragons and their cruel venom of ash? Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me be belong, belong vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand and the things that, that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted? They wanted to go and do it all without God and God said this over here. I will hide my face from them and I'll see what their end shall be. I'll see what they can do without me. And they were consumed and destroyed. And the Lord said, now where are their gods? Where is the God they trusted now? Where are their mites? Where are their defenses? Where is their victory now? Because there is no victory apart from Jesus. There is no victory, Brother Tony, apart from Jesus. No victory at all. We cannot have victory tonight had it not been for Jesus. Amen. He brought us to victory. And when we get to the place we think we can do it on our own, we're messed up. We're, we're, we're in trouble. I cannot make it without Him. Don't it say in the New Testament, without me, you can do nothing. So glad tonight for God's presence in our lives, blessing us the times He's blessed us here. The times he's lifted us up. Even when we're singing to him, we sing praises and his cloud falls and his glory falls and we feel his presence. We may be praying, his glory falls. We may be reading the word of God, his glory falls. We may be teaching or preaching, amen, and his glory falls. Bless. And it's all him, it's not us. Bless. Praise God. I wonder tonight if there's somebody 
That means a touch from God. I wonder tonight if somebody wants prayer.